Hello and welcome back to the video series on your PLR makeover. In this video, we're going to walk you through the makeover process of the stock sales copy or sales letter that you and everyone else received that purchased the same PLR package. Now you're going to learn, hopefully, a few tips and tricks to make changes to the sales letter so that it will not only convert better, but also be different from the rest of the herd. We're going to be using the HTML version, so if you have a PDF, a Word document, and an HTML version, well, the HTML, I think, is better because, well, it's already set up and formatted, so all we need to do is make a few changes here and there, and bing, bang, boom, we're ready to go. So let's head on over to our file here and go under the sales letter and graphics, sales letter and graphics, sales letter, and in this case, and not in all cases, but in this case, we happen to have all three. The Word document, well I guess we don't because the folder is empty, but it says that we have the Word document, the PDF version, and the HTML. So big deal, we're not going to use the doc anyway, we're going to use the HTML. So we're lucky enough to have both a sales letter, that's the index.html, and the thank you page. And we're going to get to this here in a little greater detail in an upcoming video, but all we're really working with right now, or are concerned with, are the guts or the content of the HTML. So if we were to open this up in our HTML editor, in this case we're going to be using Composer, that's with a K, K-O-M-P-O-Z-E-R. And you can see here, again, we're not going to mess with the uh, mini site per se or the graphics per se. We're saving all that good stuff for an upcoming video in this series, so don't worry, we're going to get to it. But we're going to cover all these details here. If you did not receive any sales letter with your PLR package, then you're at a bit of a disadvantage, but you just need to do one from scratch. It's really just that simple. In that product creation folder that I talked about in an earlier video, create another folder, title it Sales Copy, and inside of that folder, title another one and call it Swipe Files. That's S-W-I-P-E, Swipe Files. Yeah, don't let the name fool you. See, this is where when you see certain sales letters that really grab your attention, you know, like through uh, the, the the multitude of uh, sales emails that you get throughout the day or week or month, well, you know, maybe start paying attention to some of them in this regard. And that is that one of them really captures your attention, then copy that and add it to your swipe file. You may need a separate folder in your sales copy folder just for headlines, for example, and then another one for testimonials. And now don't get me wrong, we're not going to be using somebody else's testimonials, silly, but those testimonial copies might provide your imagination with a little starter fluid to help create your own look. So again, just you know, as an added extra there for you. So to help you create your sales letter from scratch, Another idea would be to do a Google search for related products. Uh, say at least, you know, that's a good starting point, and from there you can just simply branch out if you need to. Or you can head to like ClickBank or eBay, you know, other uh, sales areas similar to that, and glance through other sites that have sales letters, you know, that are similar to your topic or niche, and see how those are constructed. And again, you can utilize bits and pieces of those sales letters to build up your swipe file folder. With this, you can begin to build a draft for your letter. Of course, you can always enlist the help of your fellow forum members, you know, at the two forums that I mentioned in an earlier video. And if this all sounds like just too much work for you, well, then you can always outsource the first few times and add the purchase sales copies to your swipe files. And eventually, you'll not only have enough material, but you'll also have enough knowledge to be able to then effectively write your own award-winning, profit-pulling, eye-popping sales copy. Now, on the plus side, when you gain that level of sales copy stardom, well, you can make a boatload of bucks just doing copy for other marketers. Now, on the minus side, uh, <laughs> the same holds true. To get someone to write your sales letters, it's going to cost you some pretty pennies. You may find a startup wanting to build his or her portfolio and, you know, maybe only charge you between 50 to 100 bucks, but typically, you're going to be looking more towards the two hundred to two thousand dollar range. Yeah, exactly. Now there are top copywriters that easily pull in twenty thousand bucks per sales letter. So use that as a as an incentive, if you will, to start learning the art of sales copy. Because what these guys and gals do is simply pure magic, if you ask me. And they are worth every single penny. But that said, 
us poll folk, well, we need to start somewhere as well. So having a masterful grasp of the English language plays an important role in creating quality sales copy that converts readers into buyers. Now, since this is something that in most cases comes only with the time and experience that I noted earlier and cannot be taught in a five minute video, well, instead, we're going to cover a few pointers here to help you get going in the right direction. So number one, the headline at the top of your sales letter is very important and needs to be compelling enough to get your reader to go on to the next paragraph down and to the next paragraph after that and so on and so on. Another idea, another point is to use subheadings that are slightly larger in font size and let's say for example centered to help lead the reader into the next paragraph. So that along with the initial headline is going to compel or, or drive or pull your reader on down the page. Keep the paragraphs in short and in easily digestible chunks because large groups or large bunches of text, uh, you know, people have a tendency of glancing and whenever they see a large group of text, chances are pretty good that they may just skip over all that or hit the back button or get on to the next page, you know, altogether. So make sure that you're uh, helping the reader digest these little bitty chunks of information on down the page along with the subheadings that's going to continue to pull them into the next easily digestible chunk i.e. small paragraph. Now when adding your benefits and features, if you do, and you should, add bullets or numbers to make them even stand out further. And of course the overall look. Spelling and proper formatting is a plus. It's actually a must. It's not so much a plus. Consistent sizes in your text, font styles, and color are very important. Now let's go ahead and dive a little bit further into this example that we've got here and kind of cover some of the items that we just mentioned. For example, this is the headline here. It's big, it's bold, it captures their attention. So again, comparing this to others that you might see, you may decide that there's something that can be changed here or frankly I think it's okay. I mean for what we're trying to do here we're not trying to you know convert 20 or 30 or more percent of our readers that would be ideal but you know for what we got this is okay. Again you did not pay thousands of dollars I'm guessing for your PLR package which contains this sales copy. So this is just an added benefit. What I would consider is a template something to start you with if you're in a hurry and you want to get your product to market then this might just do the trick for you but again at least ways over time as you get more and more experienced in writing sales copy you might find that this is you know not acceptable and that you want to make some tweaks here and there but for the most part structurally speaking it's on the money it's top of the page it's uh, stands out and it also generates a question do you run again it's kind of a question of course this question marks a bit of a giveaway too do you run the other way whenever you hear words like web design or HTML and then you've got the answer to that your product and again it's kind of a subheading of sorts you don't need to have technical knowledge to create websites web design for internet business owners that's the name of the product is your solution for creating your web presence well hey cool so I've got the problem here just like my problem and the solution the product. Let me read further. And of course it pulls you on down here. And these are the subheadings that I was referring to. I might myself make this a little bit bigger font style or font size. Uh, the red that's okay. I'd probably go with uh, you know the, the black bold and larger but the red again it pulls you for those that skim over this they're gonna see the red real quick. Oh here's another one. Again it's pulling you on down the page. So, the, so far I see a lot of good points. Now, there could be a lot more to this and studies have shown, as my buddy Ron tells me, that long sales copy converts readers into buyers more times than not than the short copy. So you want to consider the possibility, if you really want to dive into this, as you read over this, try to formulate questions. And if those questions are not answered in the sales copy, then you want to add those answers. Because a quality long copy will answer just about any potential question that a reader will have to be able to convert them into a buyer. So thanks for the heads up there, Ron. So we come on down here and yeah, okay, there's some graphics. That's cool. That's always a selling point. Not as much of a selling point as I think, because frankly, I'm more visual. I, I 
think the graphics, you know, do wonders, but uh, you definitely want to have them in there. You don't want to have just a bunch of text. As a matter of fact, I don't see any uh, benefits listed in a form in which you can put graphical bullets or numbers, but if you did add that, you know, you go through the product itself and you see that, okay, well, there's some, a whole lot of benefits here, a, lot, a whole lot of features that aren't even mentioned, then go ahead and add that information to this letter come on down here and this probably covers a lot of that by introducing a table of contents now you won't find this in a lot of sales letters but this does give the reader a little bit more of an inside scoop as to what they're about to purchase and if this covers some of their uh, problems or if, or if this information here might be a solution to their problem or addresses a potential problem that they've encountered that's why they came to the sales page in the first place then cool you probably have them sold already and the rest of this is just fluff but you can see there's some formatting issues here that I'd probably take care of. I'd probably center that and center this. And again, more importantly, you want to make sure that the obvious changes take place. Put your name in here. Change the color of the text so that it matches the rest of it. Don't make it stand out like that. Again, here's another option you want to change. Make sure that the color of the font style of your name matches these surroundings. Another thing, too, is you want to go through here, and we're using, again, Composer as our HTML editor. You want to go through here and check for spelling. You want to check for the formatting as well as the content layout. And Composer, unlike NVU, which is its little brother, uh, has a optional spell checker if you've added this. And I'm not going to go into a great deal of, of how to use Composer, but if you right-click on here, go to Customize Toolbar, you'll see that there are options that you can add or take away from. These were added because a lot of these here were not stock. They were in here under the customized toolbar. So if you add the spell checker, and if you see that, that um, oh, let's say, for example, this one here. Yes, I did make this you know, on purpose. But potential is not spelled that way, and yet it is not noted. OK, wait a second. Let's check this out. Um, the spell checker may be working. It's just that it's not you know, underlining it. So we come here to Tools, go to Options, Come on down here to advanced, and that's the reason why. Real time spell check. Underline misspelled words is not checked. Check that box. Click OK. Now it's underlined. Right click on it. Spelling suggestions. Potential. OK. But that's pretty much it insofar as using Composer or any HTML editor for that matter in going through and making sure that the setup is the way that you want it and make any additional changes to the copy that you feel is needed to make it convert more and of course to be different from all the other folks out there that have an exact same duplicate of this template or sales copy if you will and next up we're going to go ahead and change our graphics then we're going to add the PayPal button we're going to put it all together in a cool little mini site similar to this one we're going to make some changes so thank you very much for watching this video hope you learned something and I wish I could teach you more about copywriting but time does not permit it in this video. Thank you again. Have a great day.